Good morning, Babylon. Wake up, Philadelphians. It's Pastor Chris, Cannabis for Christ. And I am up early. I mean, I'm still up because I got a brother, man, that does return my phone calls. I mean, he returns my texts. <coughs> he hasn't watched my video yet. But, man, this brother, he's been a brother for for over 10 years, I mean for, shoot, 20 years, um, and he's a good brother, man, but 10 years ago when I had issues, he said he just, uh, he's like every other Christian, but it's like he's still stuck around, you know, he's like, he's been blind to things, and he's not going to stand up for me, or, you know, this or that, but, but he's, he stands with me, and don't stand against me. He's never called me a false prophet. Um, I didn't even ask him, hey, dude, could you check this out and um, answer for it? Because I know he's real busy. He's seen a lot of my stuff. Um, but anyway, um, he's like, yeah, if I want to talk to him, he's all cool, man. I just need to talk to him at 430 in the morning. So, hey, I figured, you know what? Let's um, do some more of our Bible study. Again, we're watching... Um, Southern Gospel, um, and it's about a guy, and I'm guessing the timing is in between the late 50s, early 60s, and it's in the Bible Belt, and listen, you didn't have good music in church unless you were in a black church. That's where Elvis learned to play good music, but they didn't want none of that kind of stuff in the white church. And, you know, there was a bunch of other rules. Don't wear makeup, don't swim, don't um, um, don't dance, don't, you know, um, have stringed instruments in the church. And and they were into sanctification by being sanctified. Meaning that you were set apart, okay? Be holy as Jesus is holy. And if you ain't holy, then you ain't going to heaven. And, man, I'm telling you, they stumble the righteous with the commandments of men. And I get upset about that. But then I'm trying to freaking... You know, get them, I'm, and they're like a bunch of Karens getting people to like, follow the rules, follow the rules, follow the rules. And then I'm like the mere image of them. I'm like, no, nah, man, don't worry about the rules of man, you know, the rules of God. But then I'm being like a Karen to them. Man, follow the rules, follow the rules. And they won't follow the rules of, hey, you know, if, if your brother sins against you, you know, don't go to law over you, you know, to your brother. Um, Take your brother. And go to them, and no brothers will come with me when they sin against me. None will stand with me. Okay, but I'll go to the church, and they won't stand in an assembly and, and say, you know, let's call the elders and let them read my doctrine. Okay, let's say, okay, that you know what? Okay, we can't prove you wrong, so let's let your your people come into the church and worship alongside of us, you know? Um, and if we don't have room for them and the child molesters, then let's just get rid of the child molesters, but... That's just me. He has not punished us as we deserve for all our sins. He for his mercy toward those sin. who fear and honor him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. They that have done evil will come upon the resurrection of damnation. Amen. Okay. <laughs> if that's if your heart's evil, man. Okay. And you think you're just going to freaking say, uh, I believe and go. That ain't going to happen. You know. So, sorry about that. For the wages of sin is death. Thank you, God, for the bud of the vine. The wages of sin and death. It, He's memorized it. You, you don't understand it. <laughs> I already know who you are. Well, we're all a little bit down inside. Thank you. We got to realize that, you know what, like I said, these people that hate Throughout. the word of God, if it doesn't say what they want it to say, and I, and they hate me because I'm putting it to light, again, if I hate them for it, <laughs> if I can't love them, no better than them. And so 
I'm not going to wear the name Christ anymore. I'm not. I have faith. I am a prophet of God. I am speaking for God. I am evangelizing for God. I'm a man of God. And they are writing gospels about me and about every person I touch. And if I don't have a positive effect on them, they're gonna, the, the angels are going to write a whole book about what I did to hurt people. Okay? But I'll put my books up against your books, um, Joe Righteous. Leave the phone call that excommunicated. I, I, but I don't know no one that I'm ready for that right, rapture now because you guys have stumbled me. Brother Malachi will... I love you so much. ...and uh, take over this Saturday. There's All a right? thin line between love and hate. And look at this guy. He's taking his church and giving it to Brother Malachi. You're finished. <coughs> You're finished. You're out. Okay. Their sins on you. This boy's death. It's on him. You were. Oh, what did he say? You're excommunicated. So you were. Time. I wasn't his pastor. You were. You were. Yeah. Like moving out of their house because they ain't got no money. Daddy will just be me. Okay, you saying goodbye to Papa? Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, I want to make you better. Got a good example, man. Dad's an awesome dude. Yeah. You, know? you can only love the Lord as much as the person you love least. There you go. Yeah, they took that's it. Me. Wow, that's it, man. You know? And that's my 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 revelation, okay? I'm no better than them, okay? Because these people that are coming against me, man, and I'm not able to love them as Jesus does. Now, I'll say, I'll say the words, you know, forgive them, Lord, for they know not what they do. I forgive them. I love them. But my heart, man, tells a different story. And I ain't. Like I said, I have limits to my hypocrisy. You know, let's see if my boy um, does. I'm going to get him. Lexi. Yeah, you know, Lexi's right here. He's right there in that car. That's it, it's man. anywhere God leads you. It's yeah, man. You, you don't need no right. church to be behind you. Where people be behind you. We're going to go to Florida. Florida. You be that. Down, you can be Florida, man. <laughs> What's happening, my brother? It's right here, brother, on the way to Huntington Beach. Cool, 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 you know? I, I should, like, catch a ride with you, man, you know? Jump out the truck, go give a bunch of cannabis for Christ away, tell people about Jesus, and when you get done all loading and this and that, then we'll go on to the sheriff's department. I jump out there, give everybody cards. I'm, like, down with their union, man. I'm trying to hook them up so that they, uh, that they can smoke pot when they go home. And then they won't want to go back to work and shoot niggas, you know? There we go, bro. I, I do, I've talked to the union guys. I mean, like I said, I, I was, when I was in jail for a long time, you're not even allowed to talk to cops, man, unless you're the lead guy, you know, unless you're a leader. Well, I had to become a leader because I was going to talk to the cops. And I, because I'm going to tell everybody about Jesus, man, you know, whether it's the, the whatever prisoner or whatever cop, you know? And so, it worked out, man, you know, like I said. So, all the Praetorian Guard knew that my chains were in Christ. You know what I mean? So, so anyway. So, did you get to sleep today? Did I get what today? Did you get to sleep? Well, um, what time did we get off the phone? About 6 o'clock? And I had to get up at 10. And it takes me a while to sleep, but... You know, when I'm just listening to the Word of God, dude, and like just basically I kind of jump into the Bible. You know, like, uh, have you ever watched Superbook with the kids? Superbook. No. Okay, well, it's like this show with for kids. And like the guy's got like a computer. And some little thing will happen in his life, you know. 
and then all of a sudden the computer will jump him into the Word of God, and they'll like be like with Matthew and freaking John and them, and and you know, um, checking out the you know the prodigal son or whatever, or you know, with uh with with David man when you know Saul is is chasing after him, it's you know kind of like that. I'm I'm listening to the Bible, and I'll start like dreaming that I'm in it. You know what I mean? And so, and even if sometimes it used to be just when I'm dreaming, now sometimes, now it's, I am i don't have to be asleep. I'm still doing it. You know what I mean? So, it, it, it's like, as long as I get my recharge time, I'm sitting there and I, I get four or five hours of just listening to the word of God, relaxing, resting, I'll be all right. But if I don't actually get sleep, after a few days, like I said, uh, I, a while back, I started flashing back, man, to when I was dead. and But it was really bitching. I seen the flashback. I grabbed that candy, the four grams of cannabis. I ate it. And, dude, I turned on the book of Enoch, and I was there, dude. I seen the portholes. Um, I, I recognized them from when I was on mushrooms a couple years ago. Um, I seen the, the portholes go straight from the stars to the earth. They're all watching, man. All the stars are like a big memory thing. They're watching. They're, they're, they're recording. And there's portholes that go straight from the stars to the earth. You know? Um, they're made of plasma. And I was so into the plasma that in one porthole opened to the, the kingdom of God. Because I was watching Enoch unfold. And I'm watching the portholes and I'm seeing the kingdom of God. But I was so into the plasma. You know what plasma is? Like the northern lights? Yes. Yeah, it's like that. And the whole world runs on it, man. I mean, the whole galaxy. It's like they, they talk about gravity, but they don't understand how the, everything is powered by plasma. You know, it's, 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 um, it's, uh, it's, it's frequency carried in light, okay? And telling every molecule what to be. And it goes out and does whatever. And like, you know, the sun is powered by it. You know, everything's powered by it. It tells every molecule what to be into into a, into matter. It take you know, where there's no matter. It's all just um, uh, dark energy and, um, and, uh, and, dark, and dark matter. 70-30 split. And then God makes everything from plasma, sends it out in the frequency, telling each thing what to be. And they can measure it. They can see it, you know. Um, and freaking, but, and, and, and cosmology, all their bullshit sign, all their stuff, they're like, they, they wrote a book a while back, Cosmology in Crisis, because, yeah, all their theories, none of them work. But I'm telling you, the universe is electric. God gave it to me 10 years ago, because I'm the electrician. And it's pretty cool. I'm the electrician. Now, now that book you're talking about, what do you call it again? The what? Oh, the book? It's called The Book of Enoch. No, no. Superbook? Oh, Superbook. Yeah, it's for the kids. It's... Get it. See that. Um, you just check it out at superbook.com. You, you know, all the Chris channels have it. It's awesome for kids, dude. I, my kid, I, I always make the kids watch it, you know. And by my, like, basically my motorhome when I was dead, it was kind of like Superbook, dude. And now I can do Superbook. When I go to sleep like that, I do Superbook, you know, and I just go into the book, you know. I, I, I found myself doing it for a long time, you know, dreaming. And it's like that's how Einstein, dude, figured out all the shit. They, they fall asleep. They'll be contemplating, uh, you know, some deep thought. And they'll, like, put keys in their hands or marbles, you know, Tesla and Einstein, same kind of thing. And and then when they'd fall asleep, the keys or marbles would fall out and wake them up. And that little quantum fraction of time, they would have a dream that would figure out whatever it was they were contemplating. Okay? And, and then they would remember it because it woke them up right after the just the second that they were asleep, you know? Well, I've learned, you know, I... I I was doing some lucid dreaming before I got saved, reading Omni magazine, and you know, as a, you know, as a Mormon, 
and I got into some lucid dreaming and then I got saved and you know I never really I knew that it was like looked frowned upon you know blah 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 and then like I said when I started listening you know I listen to the Bible and I do this stuff and I'd have lucid dreams so you know I'm just like oh well I'm not trying to lucid dream I just am you know but now it's just gotten in the last five years it just I just every morning you know between like around seven and ten I'm just like in a lucid dream you know dream world man where I'm in the Bible you know because I'm listening to the Bible and I'm just in it, you know, and I'm the one talking back and forth, you know, and I know at the next word that's going to be said because I know the word so good, you know what I mean? And I know what to say back, you know, and I'm just, and then, and then I realize, oh yeah, it's because I'm listening to the Bible, but I still see it all. And like I said, after I died, you know, what, six months ago, um, and I seen it so clearly, like cartoon world, you know, just it, the Bible, the Bible, the book of Enoch, either one, it just is built in front of me so vividly. And now I'm doing it, like I said, I can do it in my weight just as much, you know, but it's, uh, it's amazing. Like I said, so I, the things I didn't understand about the book of Enoch, because like you said, there are all these books, Tom. You got to understand that all the biblical writers, they read all these books. Now, you don't have to say the book of Enoch, the book of Jazzers, the book of Adam and Eve, you know, um, the book of Thomas, all these, all these, whether it be the second temple books or the other gospels that weren't put in, um, especially those second temple books. Okay. The simple tick, the second temple books, all those books are freaking, all the gospel writers wrote, read them. And they're making references to those books. And if you don't understand those references, then you don't understand the Word of God. You're looking at the Word of God from our time. Okay? And now, first, I learned how to understand the Word of God better when, when I learned how to start gardening. You know what I mean? And I really got understanding of gardening, you know, because God's always talking to gardening, gardeners. But... When I started reading all these other books, and then you hear all the references to the to them in the Bible, and then you understand that those are references. And when I speak, when I write, because I learned how to read from the Bible, I learned how to write from the Bible, I make references to the Bible when I speak and when I write that most of you guys don't get when I talk to you. Most Christians, I'm making references just like Jesus does. And you guys will be sounding just like Pharisees while well, I'm sounding just like Jesus but nobody notices because I'm just making references that nobody seems to catch and when I write I write with those references um well that's the same way all the biblical writers wrote the, you know that's why they didn't just jump out and write their gospel you know um, five minutes or two days or whatever after Jesus died they waited years and years and years. And many times they didn't write it at all. They were just telling the stories, telling the stuff. You know, they'd get high. The guys would come over, you know what I mean, and listen to them. And people would write shit down. And then somebody would edit it all into a book. Whether it's Isaiah, whether it's Jeremiah. Isaiah didn't write that shit. Jeremiah didn't write it. You know what I mean? Their, you know, their friends did. Okay, they came over and, and well, you know, they freaking, here he is, sitting on his side for 40 days, you know what I mean? On this side, he's eating food, with cooked in shit, you know what I mean? They're listening to him, they're writing it down, and then they put it into a book after he dies. You know what I mean? I'm hoping you guys don't have to put this shit into the book after I die, but it don't matter because I've already died, and I, I, I basically... You guys are the ones that's dead, dead. As Jesus said, the dead bury the dead. You know? And and you have a couple of bands of communication open to me. But a lot of the church don't have any. You know? And my family had none at all. Um, and they were completely dead to me for a while. But now we got a few. And I just have to nurture them. And, you know. 
So, did you ever listen to my Gospel of Cannabis in Christ? I heard, I heard the one yesterday that you sent me accidentally. You did the one I sent yesterday. You listened to that. Yes. I okay. Did. Well, that was a short one, and that's cool. But that's but that's not the Gospel of Cannabis in Christ. Yeah, that was Corona PD. Okay. Yeah, that I said I've been I've been recording reporting crimes to them for ten years, and they've never done anything. But I've been really reporting crimes for the last two years, three years, and then I've been reporting child molesters in my house and and child molesters doing all this stuff for the last two years, and really bad when I got out of jail, and again. They allowed a child molester in my house. This guy's M.O. is he has sex with children while they're asleep. And he's living in my house with people that are asleep. And they're like, you know, people like that. This guy's, he wouldn't even have sex with Melissa unless she's asleep. Really? Yeah. And I didn't know all these things, you know. I didn't know, but, but when she, he put her out, my wife and him, we're both chasing her to put her in jail, put her in crazy farms. She, you know, and freaking why she had a, you know, a, a, a freaking $3,000 apartment that she just put $20,000 into furnishing, you know, but she had to run to Vegas to run away from them because they had me in jail. You know, I'm telling the cops that, listen, you put me in jail in a child molester in my house, you know, and my daughter's not allowed to go in my house. But the child molester lives here. And that's the kind of decisions Pam makes. She's got a child molester and a gang member that's on cocaine living in her house. Okay? Why, you know, why they're trying to put Lisa in jail and me in jail. And the Corona cops are the ones doing it. And when I get out, I tell them what's going on. You know, I get killed in custody. I tell them, come look at my trailer. Do, I want a crime scene analysis of what happened because somebody might have poisoned me. I did, you know, I, I some weird shit happened. I saved my piss samples. I freaking, you know what I mean? I still got that shit saved because I thought I might have been poisoned, you know, because I hadn't taken any drugs. All I take it was cannabis, but I had mushroom type freaking experiences, you know? Hey, What's that? I haven't heard it yet, but they need to. That dude, right. I'll tell you, between mushrooms and, and cannabis are the cure for cancer and mental illness. Guarantee you. Thus saith the Lord. You know, if I'm lying, I'm dying. Okay? But the, the, but the government doesn't, you know, the, the companies can't make no money doing this stuff. So the government started lying 100 years ago. And the church gobbled it up. It's Have you ever heard of game theory? Game theory. It's kind of like, you know how the prisoners and, co- and the, and, you know, run things for the, for the cops and, and the, you know, and, and, you know, and, and there's, you got a bunch, you got a bunch of different groups and we all allow you to get away with so much crap because, you, it ends up helping us in the long run. Check it, check it out on YouTube or something, Game Theory. It'll, it'll tell you about it. But that's basically it. The churches and the government and the corporations have got this game theory going on. You know, that they let, we're going to allow everybody to make money and fuck everybody and make slaves out of everybody. Okay? And we won't tell anybody. And, you know, that's why they could hide cannabis being in the Bible for a hundred years. And then I've been saying it for four years. And like I said, not one, like I said, I should be able to go to, to, I should be able to take you and go to pastor because he sinned against me. You know, he lied and said I was a false prophet. He, he put a restraining order against me. He asked my wife to put against the same on me. Okay. You know, got, you know, to, to help serve it. Okay. Because I wouldn't be served. I just said, I'm not home, you know, that, just tell them I'm not home, okay? You know what I mean? I'm sleeping. I sleep till freaking 10 o'clock. They'd come early in the morning. I'm not home. But but then, you know, they wanted me to be served because pastor called and she said this in court and asked her, can you help me out? Okay? 
So, you know, they both agree on the false prophet, but they won't look at the doctrine. You know what I mean? They won't look at the at the at the work I did. You know? And 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 now to this day, four years later, she left me in jail thinking that, look at oh, you're a false prophet. You know? I'm still my marriage is completely ruined. It's be, it's because of fraud. And that's what he is. And and I'm not and I'm not like I said, I can't judge him and and not be judged in the same way. Okay? I can't judge you. I can't judge nobody and not see my the secret to my salvation was that I knew all the loopholes. Listen, love covers a multitude of sins. So I love better more than anybody I know. Forgive, you know, forgive and you be forgiven. Okay? Freaking judge in the way you want to be judged. Okay? Freaking, I, I had all the loopholes, so I didn't have to do all the freaking straining at gnats about sin. You know what I mean? I had it down. I don't freaking, you know, I don't sin against my brother. I freaking don't steal. I don't, you know, I don't lie. I don't, you know. Now, unless my boss is asking me if I freaking took this freaking, uh, the stationery, you know what I mean? Um, I'm not going to admit it. Okay. Usually I would ask him and he would tell me, go ahead and take whatever the hell you want. But again, neither one of those is righteous and I'm not going to get fired for, for telling on myself. But now, you know, it wasn't the church that taught me to do better, do better than that. It was Jordan Peterson that taught me that you can't, you know, you don't lie. You know what I mean? You never lie. You know, you tell the truth and at least don't lie. You know, you don't have to tell everybody everything, but don't lie, you know, and he changed my life four years ago and I prayed him into being a Christian, you know, he yeah. gave legs to my Christianity, you know, but that, that and cannabis for Christ, because God told me I can't compromise anymore. You know, I can't, I just, you got to be truthful. You got to do it right. You can't take, you can't steal a dollar's worth of something and go give two hundred dollars to the church and freaking you know because it's convenience you know it's like i know it only costs my company a dollar and it's going to cost me ten dollars okay but oh well why give two hundred dollars to the church if i can't give up ten dollars for something that would cost my company a dollar you know I'm just not going to play that no more, you know, but, but I'm not doing it for salvation. I'm doing it because I don't understand why I'd want to give $200 to some asshole and expect to get blessed and then screw myself by stealing freaking some, a dollar from my company. You know, it just makes no sense. Okay. Well, anyway, brother. Um, read my gospel, can do my gospel cannabis in Christ. And please just tell me, Chris, you gave a really good argument. I'm not convinced, but you know what I mean? I'll keep reading your stuff and, or say, I think you're completely wrong and tell me why, or say, I think you're right. And then tell somebody else, you know what I mean? That's it. I'm not, you know, I'm not asking you to freaking... To, you know, you don't have to argue with me. Like I said, if you say it was a good argument, and, and and but I'm not convinced, you know, that's fine. Because, you know, I could get, I could have given you a good argument how Jesus didn't, you know, never existed. And maybe you didn't have a good argument to fight that, but you weren't convinced. You couldn't fight it, but you weren't convinced. Well, see, I, I leave room for that. You know what I mean? I'll give, you know, but if you can't freaking give if you can't say, come let us reason, if you can't be willing to give up uh, the, the for, you know, to, you know, to, 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 to uh, give an answer for the reason that lies within you, I don't understand you guys. I be, We've been preaching this stuff to the cults for freaking years, okay? But you guys can't stand up to your own doctrine, okay? It's just, you know, it's, it's time for you to send that, to, you read that thing and then send it to Pastor Jim and tell him, listen, dude, Chris's whole family is in turmoil over this, and you ought to be able to freaking answer for it. I can't, but you should. My family's given him over two hundred thousand dollars. You know what I mean? I think he could spend freaking uh um you know two hours 
answering for the hope that lies within screwing my whole family and pimping out my daughters. You know what I'm saying? I, I, it's just my opinion. I could be wrong. Love you, brother. Okay. Later. Don't call me, man. I'll call you. I gotta go to bed. <laughs> love you. <laughs> anyway, man, that's my brother. I love him, man. He said, I haven't drank a beer with him or smoked any pot with him, so he would not help me um, in my time of need. But he would talk to me if I'm not too offensive. And, you know, that's pretty good. Let's see what, um, what's going on over here. Okay, so anyway, they go on, you know. Just been waiting on a rainy day. Oh, so. I don't know, he gave him something. Who knows, probably money. But now, since he can't work in church, hey, they're both talented musicians. The church kicked him out, man. I know what it feels like, man. You're hurt, man. You gotta go to the world. I did the same thing, man. You know, I lost everything. The church wanted nothing to do with me. I had to go freaking to the world to make money. That's why I got such good connections, man, in the world. Praise God for the freaking, for non-Christian friends, man. They'll actually be there for you. Now remember, this is a naked Bible study. So, you know, wife and miss good Christian, now she's doing a little wine. He's still drinking water. Uh, Dom Rivera just offered us a job. What? Are you Dom Rivera? Oh, he's a businessman. He wants to speak on the main act at his new nightclub, but uh, he wants a one year contract. And so it sounds good to her, but he's not looking. You know, he wants to, to get, you know, to, to start a church and tell people about Jesus. But Mama, listen, man. She wants she wants her she wants her home and security. You know what I mean? She don't want to live like no sailor at sea. <laughs> oh, that that's good news, right? You want me to take the job? This was temporary. We have to start the church to prove all the T.O. Yeah, we'll work. Our way works too. I'm, I'm sorry, okay? I just need a minute. Hey. Well, lady, what's going on with you? Remember this naked Bible study. And I saw my daddy. These are real Christians. Oh, baby, you know she's daddy. Awesome. Okay, now, why was seeing her daddy so bad? Because, you know, them Christians, the tares, the ones that like being seen as righteous but aren't, let me tell you, when they're perverted in your mind and you can't let nobody know, let me tell you, you can't tell nobody about it, it gets a lot worse than when you can be honest, okay? So, watch. You're just standing there. I can just... Staring at me. Like a ghost. No. I'm up way too late. I gotta get up in the morning. My son finally turned on serpent bronze. But he won't do nothing else. I gotta take it to a designer now to get the little stuff done. So. You don't have to worry about I don't know if I do. Okay, she don't know she does. You might have had too much wine. Okay, don't but it's going to get worse real quick. Our life was stolen from us. Man, I know how that is. My life was stolen by the church, by evil people in the church. Okay, and this brother Tom, who I love, who I love, man, and 25 others like him, wouldn't lift a finger for me. But this, this, this is easy. We play music, we get paid, we sing, we go home, repeat, do it again, no one judge it. Well, maybe it is, but you knew who I was when you married me. No. I you don't know. know. I did, I did. I just didn't know who I I'm was. I'm not giving you his last name. Samuel. But you're going to see. She's got some reasons, okay? I... Now, what was that? 
about, remember about child molesters at nighttime? Come on. Daddy crawled into my bed. Okay, that's it right there. I, I was only five years old the first time that my daddy crawled into my bed. Oh. And these people, these, this police chief, I told the police chief, you have child molester in my house. He's breaking law. He's not supposed to be there. He's got access to my children. I've heard that. Now, he's he's had my two-year-old grandchild since she was two, since she could walk she was on a pole um sexualized my grandchildren since you know it's just ridiculous and i'm so glad i have this time with her to deprogram the crap that he programmed into her five years old the first time that my daddy crawled into my bed that's how child molesters do when they sleep that's why my you know I wanted to tell the investigators what's going on but no so they're like the night prowler man and let me tell you I was in and they, they put me in the crazy farm right after oh, they tried to kill me and on a 14 day hold saying so I put a gun thing. in my head which would have been a felony for me um, and so that was a lie. Um, it's all bullshit. And but I'm walking. Everybody fell asleep, dude. I had access to the keys, and everybody was asleep at the freaking Riverside Community Health Center. Man. I could have walked right out of that place, man. I was walking amongst the dead, man. I'd been walking amongst the dead for three days before. And it was like, and it was still going on, man. It was crazy, but anyway, not as crazy is the church allowing the pastors to feed on the people, okay, and that's what they're doing. Now, homeboy, he's got bills, you know what I'm saying? I went to him. I'm worried about you. I've been in here a week and you haven't eaten. You know, man, there's nothing worse than having a church hate on you, chase you out, pick you apart. Look, if you don't talk to me, Samuel, I need you to just leave me alone. At least just tell me what I can do. I've seen this for years. It's terrible, man. Can you at least just tell me what I can do? Tell me what I can do. Tell me what I can do. That's all they want to know. What can we do? Can How can we fix it? Well, that's not something I can do. And that's what my she wife what wants my me to do. Okay, can I undo what her or daddy treated, her how her back. daddy treated her? And, and she went out to find me because I was like her daddy, but I'm not near the asshole I, she was. He was until she's not happy until she can try to get me to act like him. But I won't, so the harder she tries. Anyway, um, I digress. And this ain't about me. No. Hello? Uh, Can I speak with Samuel, please? Yeah, Mr. Sick. Well, I can't. This is Dr. Ben. From the hospital. It's 5 o'clock in the morning, I gotta get up at 10. Son, your daddy had a heart attack. I'm sorry to tell you, he didn't. Sorry, son. He was a good man. Sure was. Now he's looking through the old, uh, you know, dad's old stuff. I'm going to find you in your county. Pay attention. I got a call this morning. Not from the police department at Wayne's where he was arrested, but from T.O. Whitmore. The boss. He told me my son was in of trouble and he wanted me to meet him at a coffee shop in Williams. So I wanted to help my son. He wants to help his son. He wanted to cut a deal. He wanted a deal. I wonder what that could be. Why would this guy um, help his son out of problems? He didn't like his son. So, but. 
But the thing is, is if you remember back, and it'd be nice if I could go back real quick and show you, but it's five o'clock in the morning and I don't want to do that. All right, so this guy is the in the back of the mishandling of evidence and the degradation of evidence caused by the fire, these charges will be dismissed. Now, why would that guy do that? I always wondered why he was in the back of the court Thank you, sir. and the guy got dismissed. These charges have been dropped under one condition, community service. I just don't understand why the judge told me to go. I don't think any worry about that. Got one more in the courtroom? Why was Tio in the courtroom? Oh, no. We can't hold hatred in our hearts. Okay, now there it is. That one's for me. Doesn't matter why I was there. Sorry, Dad. We can't. This guy is my I'm example. About okay. Down. I'm thinking about church. stepping down from the church. What? Is it me? Huh? Gosh. I just. I want to help you become the man you're meant to be. And the only way to do that hey, is to give you. up my ministry so this guy would not That's put right. my kid in prison for Thank having marijuana not. in the car. Okay. Which, you know, would have been a life sentence back then. Never surrender the dream. But he tells yeah. him, you never surrender. I'm going to surrender for you. I'm going to give my flesh for my children. And you know what? I'm giving it to him. While I'm still running on and doing my thing, because nobody's going to stop me. But if I got to get eaten by dogs, and if I got to, you know, give my flesh to be burned then I'm going to do that, okay? And so, anyway. Not from the police department in Weems where he was arrested, but from T.O. Whitmore. He told me my son was in a bit of trouble and he wanted me to meet him at a coffee shop. <laughs> wanted to meet you at a coffee shop. shop. Weems. I wanted to help my son. Now it's time, okay? And this... Is the difference between me and him and the dad, okay? Because the dad could forgive those that are trying to kill his ministry, kill what God's doing with the people through him. And read September 29, 1969. You know, I can't rewrite history, but I can't change the future. And that's what she asked. Can you? change history remember Samuel please where are you um, going I think when I was dead I might have I'm not sure I know I went from one side of the well I went to the edge of the universe <coughs> just to see how far it was Kill him? Because that is the question. And the Bible says that if we hold murder or um, hatred in our heart, it's like murder. Now, let me tell you, it's not the same as murdering, but you're not, you know, uh, I can't, uh, you know, uh, uh, holding on to the, 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 faith of your salvation is fine holding on to your sin is not and having sin okay and i'm going to hold on to the, the, the faith of my salvation in the end is cool but i'm holding on to the fact that god is going to deliver me from this hatred from this um sin and i'm going to get there before um he comes man because i'm going to be ready when he does come Okay, and he's going to get me there, and I got faith in that. And if you, you know, are still on the way towards that as you go, getting better all the time, then you're probably going to do fun, just fine. But, yeah. Tell me what happened. I just want to hear If you think you can hold on to your sin, then um, you're regarding iniquity. You're holding it within. I, I don't you. 
don't care yeah. how much you fool yourself and thinking you're and saved. If you walked away from GCO, I, I'd have had um, He's going to say, I, depart from me, Judge workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Only you. You took the one thing from my father that he loved more than anything in the world. You got that wrong. You got that wrong. And this guy here is now going to speak some truth. Okay? Is that right? Yeah. He's up to you more. Thank you, Lord, for the fruit of the vine. Lord, please help me go to sleep here. Five fifteen. But he was dis demand by a child. And man, I mean, 